Welcome to the quick start tutorial for Phoenix FD4 3DS Max. In this video, we look at creating a liquid simulation first using a quick preset, and then we'll rebuild it manually to more fully understand it. Now I'll start in a blank scene, and I'll create a sphere and place it here. This will be the source of my liquid. With the sphere still selected, choose the tap water preset from the Phoenix FD toolbar now select the Start Simulation icon, and you'll see the liquid simulation begin pouring down from the sphere. Click Stop to halt the simulation as it starts to fill the container. Okay, let's add a dome light from the V-Ray toolbar to the scene. And in the command panel, set the dome light to be invisible. Make sure you're set to V-Ray as your renderer, and then Render the frame to have a look at your quick preset water simulation. Now we did that pretty easily by using the tap water preset. So let's take a look at setting this up manually to have more control. Select the liquid simulator and delete it, and then select the source and delete that as well to start fresh. Click on the create a liquid simulator icon in the Phoenix FD toolbar and click and drag to create a volume like so. Make sure the sphere is inside the simulator and is at the top. Now click Create a Liquid Source icon in the toolbar and place the source in your scene. In the Modify panel, you can see that there is no emitter for this source yet, so click the Add button and select the sphere to add that to the Emitter Nodes list. Now it's very important to note that scale is a central factor in simulations. Our sphere is about 4.5 centimeters wide, so I'll just set that radius to an even 4 centimeters. Since size is an important factor, make sure to build your scene in real-world units. So it's a good idea to go into the unit setup in the Customize menu to check your settings and make sure that your units match. Select the simulator, and in the Modify panel, under the Grid Rollout, are the parameters to control the resolution of your grid, which greatly affects the look and performance of the sim. Increasing the cell size reduces the overall resolution of the simulation shown in Total Cells parameter, which gives you better performance. Decreasing cell size increases the resolution, making the sim look and act better, but at the cost of system performance. So it's always a good idea to go for the lowest total cells possible that give you the look you need to maximize performance. I'll set the cell size to about 0.3 centimeters, giving me about 4 million cells. When you use a quick preset, this parameter is adjusted for you. Now, if you click the Start Simulation icon, you'll confirm that the sphere is emitting the liquid inside the simulator. This time, the sim is all white compared to the quick preset, so let's go ahead and change that. Select the simulator and expand the preview rollout. The faster the particles are, the whiter they will be. So we will offset the white speed parameter by making it higher, introducing blue into the sim where the particles are not traveling as fast as this value. Set the white speed to 1200. Now let's get this to look more like what we had with the preset. Right now, the edges of the pore are pretty jagged. Expand the Dynamics rollout and adjust the steps per frame to 12. This provides for a more natural look, but will make the sim run slower. The higher the steps per frame, the longer the calculations, so try to find the lowest setting for the effect that you need. And after letting the simulation run a bit, moving up to 12 for steps per frame did address this ragged edge effect and helped smooth the shape of the pore. As you can see, the liquid is flowing right through the floor and disappearing. This means that our simulator is open and needs to be closed. Open the grid rollout. You can see the boundary conditions are indeed all open. Set the X, Y, and Z axes to jammed both. As the simulation runs, the liquid will now collide with the bottom and the side walls of the simulation container. It is, however, running slowly, so we can adjust the resolution to address that. First, take note that we have about 4.4 million cells to calculate in the sim, and click Decrease Resolution 
to have the number of total cells to make the SIM run faster. Stop the SIM and click decrease resolution two more times to get about half a million cells. You can also set the cell size parameter directly to affect the resolution. Put in 0.5 centimeters for the cell size and we'll end up with just about 900,000 total cells. Start the SIM again and you'll see it's running much faster. Click to the Dynamics rollout and set the steps per frame to 1 to speed up the SIM even more. Now feel free to experiment with different settings and when you're done, go ahead and stop your SIM. Render the result and you'll notice that the water is a solid purple color. Open the Slate Material Editor and drag in it a new V-Ray material. Double click it to see its parameters and set the Diffuse to black. Then set both Reflect and Refract to white and then enter an IOR value of 1.33 for water. Now you simply assign the selected material to the simulator and we should get a better water look when you render a new frame. Now of course, feel free to adjust the material and the lighting in the scene to achieve the look that you're going for. Now let's look at how to make this liquid collide with and fill an actual object rather than just the simulator's box shape. Here I have a scene with a jar in the studio lighting setup with a background. This file is provided in the tutorial's downloaded assets shown below. Switch your view to PhysCam001 to see what we'll be rendering. Back to Perspective View and select the sphere. In the Phoenix FD toolbar, choose the tap water quick preset just like we did before. It creates the simulator, but we need to adjust it. Use the X, Y, and Z size parameters to size the simulator shape to have a little space between it and the jar and then move the container down around the jar like so. Using these parameters to size the container as opposed to simply scaling the simulator also changes the simulator's resolution to give it more detail as needed in larger containers and this is the best way to size one of these containers. Start the simulation. I'll elapse some time here to show you how the sim resolves over the course of several minutes. Go back to your camera view. Open the slate to create a material for the water. Create a V-Ray material just like we did in the last part of the tutorial. Make sure the diffuse is black, that reflection and refraction are both white, and that you set the IOR to 1.33. Create another V-Ray material for the glass jar. Make sure you set the diffuse to black and reflection and refraction are both white but this time leave the IOR to 1.6. Select the glass part of the jar and assign this material. Render a frame to see how the fluid is interacting with the jar. Any geometry inside a simulation container will automatically interact with the emitting fluid. You can of course exclude geometry from interacting and you can even create non-solid geometries which are geometries that a simulation can flow through, but still be used as a source or a force acting on that simulation. These we will discuss in upcoming videos. Now the sim will eventually overflow the jar. So select the liquid source object and look at the outgoing velocity parameter. This sets how much fluid is being discharged by the emitter, and so animating this value will control how much liquid is being created, like when you need to start and stop the pour. Select the simulator and click the Decrease Resolution button three times to have a resolution of about 1.6 million cells. Scrub your timeline back to the start. Now we're going to be animating the pour to look like this rendered result. So at the beginning of the scene, select the source and set the outgoing velocity to zero meaning nothing will be emitted even if you start the simulation. Now set the outgoing velocity to 16 and then scrub ahead to frame 23 and then click the auto key button to turn it on. Enter 0 for outgoing velocity at frame 23. 
So now our outgoing velocity is keyed at 16 at frame 0, and I'll click and drag that keyframe over to frame 20 so that the liquid stops pouring between frame 20 and 23. Turn off Auto Key. Go back to the beginning and start the sim. I'll elapse time here again to show how the simulation resolves over several minutes, and then I'll stop the simulation. Scrub the simulation, and it's a little choppy, so select the simulator, and in the preview rollout, turn off Show Mesh. This now just shows the particles for the liquid pour and will scrub much faster. You can pick a point in the simulation like I will here and turn show mesh back on to see the liquid better. You can see at the top of the pour there's a large spread of these drops coming out of the emitter. This is because the emission is coming from the surface of the sphere. Select the liquid source object and change the emit mode to volume brush. What this means is that instead of emitting the liquid from the surface area of the sphere, it will now emit from the whole volume of the sphere. Now a dialog appears asking to convert the emitter to a non-solid object, so choose yes. This means that the sphere geometry itself will not interact with the liquid simulation, sort of like holding a ball under pouring water. Select the simulator and in the modify panel, under the Dynamics rollout, reduce steps per frame to 5. Go to the start of the timeline and start the simulation. Now, I'll elapse a little time here to let the simulation calculate for just a couple of minutes, and then I'll stop the sim here to show you how those spread out droplets are no longer an issue. Go back to the camera view and render a frame to see how the jar looks now. After a brief moment, you should have a nice jar of water just like this. Thank you for joining us on this quick start video on liquid simulations using Phoenix FD for 3DS Max. Oh.